When I'm not telling the drive-thru barista that I'll have a tall black coffee and I guess I'll get a pumpkin spice latte for my girlfriend who's, I mean, not in the car because she's at home busy being super hot. I like to answer questions idiot on YouTube, so let's get to it. Hey Sean, any advice on major 11th chords? Greetings from Denmark. I'd like to tell you about the most useless chord on a guitar, the major 11 chord, all right? So before we get into why I don't really ever use major 11 chords on guitar, let's build it on a piano because it makes more sense when you spread it out first. All right, chord building makes way more sense on a piano because we just have the notes in the key of C, which are the white keys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, okay? So to C major is just a triad, we just take a white key, skip one, skip one, there's C major, we can make C major seven. Make C major nine, there's nine away. Eleven. So, it really kind of makes sense if you organize it on a piano, but that sound is interesting. So as you can see, a major 11th chord is actually made of six different notes. Now, in a scale, there's only seven notes. So we're basically just playing all the notes in a scale together, and it creates an interesting sound. Now, on a piano, when you spread it out like that, it makes a certain amount of sense. On a guitar, we don't really have the luxury of being able to spread those out and play them out at once, because most guitars only have six strings, and it's hard to even play six different notes on each string. A lot of times they're doubled. A lot of times the open strings are helping you out. But the major 11 chord voicing that I guess I like the best is this. Okay, now again, uh, guitar is a very bass note, root note centric heavy instrument, I would say. So we'll do this over in A major, right? So we'll have the A and the bass, all right? My middle finger's on the fifth fret, the low E string. I'm gonna skip the A string. I'm gonna get the sixth fret on the D string and the G string, okay? So I have in the A major scale, I have a root note, it's major seventh, it's third, the major third is important to kind of give it a major class. And then the 11, which is right here, this D up here, third fret on B string, okay? So that's, that's got some value. I can see this maybe being a one chord to a four chord. Back to one. Or maybe a three minor chord. So it has some value, but again, there's I think there's a little too much tension. Even that voicing right there, if we kind of look at it, the major third to the 11 is only a half step away, right? I think it makes more sense when you look at it in a guitar hand shape scale, okay? So if we take the A major scale, Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you don't know how to make that, definitely check out my Patreon because I go all from the very beginner to all learning all the scales and being able to make chords out all that stuff. Check it out, super, super inexpensive. Take the one, the three, the five. There's our A major chord. One, three, five, major seven, A major seven. One, three, five, seven. Then we can kind of keep going eight. Nine, right? One, two, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, right there. That would be how we would kind of spell out that chord. And you notice hanging on that eleven makes us want to go somewhere else. I th I think it kind of wants to go back to here, which again is the my uh, the major third of that chord, right? So I I don't think there's a whole lot of value in that right there, but. I think the value is in being able to arpeggiate it up and down the neck. So for instance, uh, something like this, like a one. I think that's kind of like a cool little line that you can make that is essentially a major seven or a major 11 chord, right? So you have the one to this major third, again in A, five to nine, it's five, one, three, five, right? So start there and then from there, go to the major seven, the major nine, the major 11, and then I think that kind of brings me back to here, right? So. All right, so I think kind of like being able to spell a chord out through the fretboard 
has importance, but again, there's just, I, I haven't found a major 11 chord voicing that I really like using on a guitar just because it's so spread out and you're playing so many different notes at the same time, you're forced to imply some notes. I think there's cool stuff that can be done. Like if we just take the root note and then it's 11 and it's nine and you kind of end up with something like, but then you know, you're know you getting in like, all right, this is really just an A and a D and a B, right? It's a root note, major seven, 11. That's kind of cool. But is that even like a major 11? I don't know, whatever. So don't ever use major 11 chords. <laughs> How do you stay so relaxed while playing something so difficult? So this was on the video I posted the other day where it's like the hardest song I can play and it's Memory Lane by Elliot Smith, right? I think what makes it so difficult is it's different finger style patterns that kind of change within each other and you're all over the neck. There's a lot of stretching going on and then being able to sing and play at the same time this is like the hardest thing that I personally can do. But if you watch the video, it doesn't really look like I'm struggling, right? It's kind of like moving around because it's just been drilled so much. I struggled countless hours, not even just generally on that song, but learning that kind of style, the Elliott Smith style, which again, he's like, you know, probably my biggest inspiration guitar wise. So, you know, in the final performance, you don't see the struggle, but I think that's how it is with anybody. If you look at any kind of like guitar god or guitar hero, they don't really look like they're struggling unless they're adding an element of showmanship. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about Eddie Van Halen recently. Eh? Like you look at how effortlessly he just like goes all throughout the neck. And again, his style of playing is so beyond my style of playing. I, I just like the acoustic stuff more as far as like what I spend my time practicing. Not that I could ever play like Eddie Van Halen, but if you see him playing, it's like, wow, it doesn't really look like he's struggling just because he's drilled it and he's practiced it so often as all great guitar players do. You know, it looks like I'm struggling when I'm struggling, but I'm probably not gonna be doing a performance unless you tune into the live feeds where I'm just trying whatever. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I won't really post anything until I feel like I've, I've got it down. So that's why it looks relaxed, but what you're not seeing in the final result is just like the hours and hours of practice that goes into that. Like I promise you guys, I'm not, I'm not like a next level guitar player at all. I just practice the stuff until I feel like I have it. And then, uh, you know, when I feel like it's ready, then I, I'll make a video about it. But that song definitely, uh, Memory Lane, Elliot Smith. Again, there's a lesson on that on my Patreon. Uh, just a beast to play, but it's so satisfying when you get something like that done and you're proud of it that uh, I definitely will try to keep it in my regular repertoire because, you know, once you lose something like that, uh, it's hard to, <laughs> it's, it's harder to get it back. So just keep drilling it, whatever it is. Don't ever be discouraged by seeing how awesome somebody else is doing it because what you're not seeing is the hours that they put into it. And uh, you know, you can do it. I see you with Taylor guitars most of the time. I myself love Taylor guitars. What would be a great mid-range cutaway Taylor guitar to check out and maybe buy? Would love to know what you think, thanks. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Taylor guitars. This is a 614 CE Builders Edition. Uh, I think this is like the best guitar that, that they make. In fact, uh, this is what I would consider a very expensive guitar. Everybody's kind of different when it comes to prices and stuff like that. This costs like $4,000, right? I personally probably would never be in a position where I could buy something like this just off the shelf. Luckily, uh, Taylor was able to send me this. They let me pick one out and I'm like, oh, it's gotta be the 614 because I just think it's like the perfect guitar as far as like size, the, uh, the different special things about it. Dollar for dollar, I think the best Taylor is the 314, okay? Uh, I have been the owner of a GA3, which is essentially kind of like the, the 314s as far as like the wood specs and stuff. I just think Taylor guitars are like really like, and if you buy a Taylor guitar, especially three series and above, that's like a lifetime guitar, right? Not saying that you can't get a really awesome guitar for like $600 in, in that range. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great brands out there that do that. But with the Taylor stuff, the reason that a lot of it is expensive is because it's a, ta a guitar that's gonna actually sound better as it gets older. So I think the 314, Cutaways are probably dollar for dollar, like the best. Uh, those go for around $2,000. You can find them a little bit cheaper used. Uh, I paid a little bit less than this for, for the GA3. The one thing is it doesn't have a cutaway. Uh, that's something that, 
you know, after having this and loving this guitar for the longest time, I really decided that if I was going to get something different from Taylor, it was going to have a cutaway just because I've played a lot of live shows since I ended up getting this and it doesn't have like uh, electronics in it. So electronics and cutaway are definitely something that I definitely really wanted and that's why I went with the 614. But I do think that uh, the 314 cutaway, dollar for dollar, is probably the best bargain for what I would consider a mid-range for Taylor guitar. And again, that those are like half as much as the 614. But what you're getting is like the, the tuners on this are just like awesome. The the wood, the it's ridiculous. This guitar, this guitar is ridiculous is all I can say. But uh, I love all the Taylor guitars, even the 214s and stuff. Uh, are totally worth it. But I do think that spending the extra, I think $500 to go up to the 314 is worth it. And that would be my recommendation for for that question. Worst teacher. Like the worst teacher? The absolute worst? <laughs> that's, a, that's a high, high compliment to me. Because I think there's really something to be said about the absolute best at anything and also the absolute worst at anything. So if you've somehow recognized me as the worst teacher, I must be doing something right. That C standard tuning piece sounded great, man. Cheers for the tunes, guy. So this was on the live stream where I busted out this, which I now have tuned to open C because I'm working on some more Elliot Smith stuff because that's just what I'm doing now in pandemic is going through old Elliot Smith songs and trying to learn them. So basically what that means is it's really kind of severely down tuned. I would say about as down tuned as a general standard tuned guitar can get without having to like make adjustments to it. And it's just, a I love it. Basically what that means is it's just tuned where the open strings just ring out to a C. Okay? The thing that I love about this is, so now you have like m a lot of songs are one, four, and five. It's so like a C, F, G is just open, fifth fret, uh, seventh fret. But then you can really make like super pretty open chimey things once you find the extensions, right? Like a C major seven. I love major seven chords. I just have to find a B. So now a B on the B string is actually the fourth fret. So I can just add that in there. And there's my C major seven. And then if I want to add uh, the major seven to an F, I could just. Then the G. kind of affords like a lot of cool open chimey sounding things that uh, you can't get in standard tuning. So if anybody's interested I can maybe do like a whole video on just open tunings or something like that because again it's something else that I'm starting to get into a little bit more than I have been so let me know. For listening homework of course I'm going to give you something from my man Elliot Smith just because I've just been going back in and deep diving through all the songs that I love. And I think if you haven't ever given him a chance, definitely check it out because his music is something that totally changed my playing and kind of inspired my entire career now. So I can't really hype him up enough. Uh, he just doesn't have bad songs. You know what I mean? Some of them get a little interesting near the end. And I, I just, I'm a huge super fan. So come at me if you have an issue, but I'm going to make you listen to it, listening homework. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching.